Hello, I'm Dr. James Bogash, expert in health and longevity and creator of Bogash Life and Balance. And today we're going to revisit a topic that I have certainly talked about in the past year, and that has to do with COVID and surfaces. So that the term for surfaces that may transmit disease, virus, or bacteria or fungi is called a fomite. So any inanimate object that, so say it's a door handle or a cup or something like that would be called a fomite. And so the question is, are fomites really a thing with COVID? Early on in the first couple months, we, we, we were doing everything just in case. Uh, it's of course understanding that almost every respiratory virus is not it's not typical for them to be transferred by fomites, but we thought maybe COVID would be different. And so we were disinfecting everything. Couldn't find a Clorox wipe to save your life. And the sales of that went through the roof. Literally every surface everywhere was being disinfected. <laughs> uh, some of that was improperly disinfected whether we're talking about the wrong substances or contact time. But as data came on, or as, as data accumulated, we started to realize that COVID really just isn't spread by fomites. It's been estimated that if you touch a contaminated surface, so somebody just sneezed or coughed on something, they have COVID and there's virus on there, you have a five in 10,000 chance of getting COVID from that. Five, that's if it's contaminated. And, you know, a virus is, is really small. The, the typical vaccination, just to give you an idea, has the, the Pfizer, I believe, has 10 billion viral molecules in that little amount that they inject into you. So imagine, like, every surface on the planet doesn't have active virus. Um, and active becomes a keyword. Initially, we saw a lot of really scary data about how long COVID could live on services. We saw uh, the cruise ship that uh, princess, diamond princess, that even you know, day weeks later there were still viral particles. But keep in mind that many times we're looking at the corpse of this virus and not an actual virus, but it was still enough to constantly scare people that we needed to disinfect every possible surface. The um, and so just because we find we do a study and we we swab that cruise ship uh, like the nightstand and we find a viral corpse or particle doesn't mean that it's going to cause an infection. Even if you swabbed it, jammed it up into your nose, it's still incredibly unlikely to cause a COVID. And as data continues to accumulate, every major organization has agreed on this, that COVID spread through fomites is just not really a thing. Certainly it can, it can happen, but it's so incredibly rare that as to be considered insignificant. Despite this, we're still disinfecting everything. We are, we are having uh, one of the theaters that we like to go to, they have disposed, they have refillable cups and they're not refilling the cups because nobody wants to touch that cup and damn the environment as far as going through more paper cups and, and, and everything there. And um, the, uh, the other thing is we've sprayed down surfaces, but all of these disinfectants have a contact time that may be as much as 30 seconds, one minute, or leave it to evaporate. But what are we doing? We're spraying it down. You see this at the grocery stores. They spray it down and then they wipe it right off. And it does nothing. And that kind of fits in with the whole pattern since we're really not doing anything. We still haven't seen those substances transmitting the virus and that makes sense because those, trans those virus, those surfaces are just not transmitting the virus. We are still acting as if everything has an active live virus that can get us sick, but the data just doesn't suggest that. And every organization, even the, the ones that have disagreed with other things and they've butted heads on other topics, all agree that fomites are just 
not a thing. Uh, interestingly enough, one of the things we knew early, even as early as May of last year, was an interesting study looking at uh, contact tracing in Korea, and it had to do with this office building that was 19 stories, a mix of commercial and residential, and so lots of people using the elevator and the stairs and going up and down and touching all kinds of things. And there was a large spread of COVID in one floor, one area that suggested that the, but those that spread was limited to those people that were sharing the air in that it was a call center. But nobody anywhere else in the building or very few people in the building got sick. And so we knew very early on that fomites and touching things was probably not going to be a factor and that respiratory uh, res the respiratory viral aerosol is the way that this is transmitted. So, so the bottom line is, what does this mean? It means that disinfecting everything is not good for the environment. We need to have, a, you know, certainly I've talked about how important it is to have a normal, healthy bacterial flora. And when we're disinfecting everything, we're now we're killing off those bacteria, and we're not allowing our bodies to deal and um, and fight off those viruses and, and tone and train our immune system that doesn't even have any, probably not even nearly as important as the amount of damage that we're doing to the environment. And as all of these um, disinfectants and everything get washed down the drains and into our water supply, and into the, the lakes and rivers and streams, like, there's going to be serious downstream consequences from this. So um, just maybe it's time to back off on disinfecting everything you possibly might come across. Uh, the one thing I still never understood is those fountains, uh, uh, drink fountains where you can refill your own cup, where they, they wanted you to take a brand new cup each time. I. I've ran this one through my brain. I can't possibly figure out in what universe COVID would be transmitted by doing that. But again, it was one of those rules that came up and that I'm like, I have to get a new cup that makes zero sense. But we've done a lot of things that don't make a lot of sense during this pandemic. Initially, it was learning experience. You know, we didn't know. Now we do know. And it's time to start waking up to what we do understand about how COVID is transmitted. As always, I'll post a link to this particular study. It's just kind of a review commentary backing up some of these, uh, some of the things that I said. Uh, I'll post that in the description. Make sure you like this video, share it with somebody who you think needs the information, and subscribe to the channel.